Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for uh, Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up uh, first, we've got uh, on the satellite really a still a general area of high pressure out here over the Bering Sea. Not quite the block it was late last week and into Saturday, uh, but still ridging here. The, actually, the center is starting to drift back to the south, but still a pretty good ridge through the uh, northern Bering Sea here up into the Chukchi Sea. But i uh, got these weak disturbances now starting to punch their way in a little bit there. That one with the uh, coming in around some west-southwest flow beginning to make some headway eastward. And another one back behind that. Uh, neither are all that strong. But uh, again, something of a change coming up here. And then also we've got moisture here along the north Gulf Coast uh, coming up across just off the coast of the Panhandle here, taking a turn to the west and northwest. And areas of light snow, of course, clouds and areas of light snow spreading westward here uh, actually has during the uh, late last night and in throughout the day today, uh, coming in across Prince William Sound. Um, Girdwood picking up about four inches of snow or so uh, today and late last night. And areas of snow extending back across Prince William Sound all the way along the North Gulf Coast. And this disturbance here lifting north brought some areas of uh, moisture here over the northern southeast coast and then breaking out to uh, looks like some partial clearing here down to the south with the precipitation ending as that, uh, that surge moves north but there's more moisture down there that will be coming northward as well. Otherwise we've got uh, snow showers in and around the Kodiak Island area uh, today there, kind of a counterclockwise flow here, general area low pressure in the Gulf there, so that pulling uh, some of this moisture back down to the southwest there and uh, putting some scattered showers in over Kodiak. Otherwise, Bristol Bay looking uh, pretty good today with uh, some clearing there, that offshore flow, but uh, that picking up moisture out over the open water and producing clouds and areas of light snow and snow showers there across the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula all the way over to the eastern Aleutians. And uh, in the clouds there over the Pribilofs that extend back to the north here towards St. Lawrence Island. But the interior remaining uh, pretty clear and uh, quite cold, especially this morning. Some areas uh, dropping down into the mid-minus 40s. Uh, places like uh, Huslia, for example, at least 45 below for their low temperature this morning and uh, slowly recovering this afternoon, but still staying well below zero throughout much of this area. And of course, uh, more southeast flow temperatures milder over the southeast coast as well as the north Gulf coast here. And not a lot going on out to the west. Uh, again, just a very weak system here just west of ADAC. Otherwise, it uh, looked like uh, some clearing there. Definitely dry, winds light, ADAC over to Atka. Into the eastern Aleutians, you get into the uh, colder lower clouds here. They're coming southward uh, from the Bering Sea. And uh, rolling that or onto uh, for tonight, the forecast is uh, we've got this system coming across the bearing here, the one that's uh, beginning to break through. A trough will extend down, bring a chance of snow across the Perbolos tonight, light snow, and that should reach uh, Nunavak Island late tonight. General increase in the clouds here right along the southwest coast, especially the Yukon Delta area. But uh, inland, though, staying clear and cold with light wind, so falling uh, well below zero, temperatures 25 to 35 below zero. Some areas as cold as 40 to 45 below again, uh, depending on how far west the back edge of this cloud shield is. Of course, it'll be much milder here with the areas of light snow along that trough axis back through the, uh, all along the eastern interior, kind of an increasing uh, zone of snow here developing over the Kenai Peninsula, locally Cook Inlet, back down to Kodiak Island with that uh, influx of moisture coming in or continue to come in from the east-southeast there and then the uh, cold air locked in over the central interior and then subtly flow aloft. This will be kind of a zone of light snow that will tend to increase here later tonight and into tomorrow across, the, again, south central Alaska, Copper River Basin, portions of the northern panhandle, and that will extend northward to the eastern Arctic coast. Uh, this area will tend to dissipate, uh, continue to dissipate tonight as this next system starts to produce a little more in the way of offshore flow there for the northern panhandle. So don't look for a whole lot of precipitation, especially after midnight tonight. Otherwise, as I mentioned, clear and cold here over the west. Chance of snow showers continues there for the Alaska Peninsula. And a band of snow with that uh, next front that isn't all that strong, but again, you can see the high pressure retreating to the south and that kind of uh, allowing those systems to spread eastward across the uh, northern and central Bering Sea. And moving on to the uh, forecast for Tuesday, you can see that next system uh, 
continue to advance eastward. Weak warm front right through here with the leftover moisture, that initial uh, disturbance really washing out, just leaving some clouds and snow along behind here. That will be along the southwest coast but tomorrow afternoon. A little bit better chance of some of that uh, getting into Nunavak Island and right along the coastal areas there from about uh, oh, Cape Newenham on up to uh, Cape Ramonsoff. But uh, this bat should be north of the Pergola. It should be on the uh, south side of that. So just mostly cloudy skies there. And then a band of snow there with that uh, cold front, uh, light snow breaking out again out towards Shimia. And otherwise staying cold once again here over the western interior. And it looks like periods of snow for the Kenai Peninsula, south central Alaska areas right up across the Manuska to Sitna Valley into the interior. In fact, anywhere from uh, two to four inches of snow could fall here by tomorrow afternoon across uh, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula areas. I'll become more showery down toward Kodiak there. And again, with this system down to the south here, slowly spreading some rain and snow in over the southern areas tomorrow afternoon with a pretty good increase in the winds here as well, Stevens Pat or for Clarence Strait and off the coast, uh, look for the winds to increase, but uh, generally dry with clearing here over the northern southeast coast all the way back over to Yakutat. Otherwise, snow extends all the way up to the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast and then just some scattered snow showers here through the Koyukuk Valley area and then breaking out again as you get out towards uh, the Kobuk Valley, on back to the northwest coast under that uh, 1,030 millibar high. Winds will be quite light, temperatures staying well below zero again throughout the day tomorrow. And that'll extend right down across the Cuscoom Valley. And then you pick up some clouds around Bristol Bay. Pretty gusty on the winds here, outflow winds. Uh, Kachemak Bay, gale warnings out there for those northwest winds, possibly into the Barrens as well. And breezy conditions, but uh, that'll tend to clear it out there on the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula. and. Uh, Kodiak Island, mostly cloudy with a risk of a snow shower too. Moving on to the outlook for Wednesday, high pressure continues to dominate the southern Bering Sea and the Aleutians. That's going to hold these systems back out to the west and multi-direct them, the brunt of the energy up to the north into Russia as it links up the ridging, relinks up with that 1,030 millibar high there over the Russian Far East. Got a weak low there just south, southwest of St. Lawrence Island. So a chance of snow showers there for Savunga and Gamble and also along this trough, which is mostly offshore here, all the way down, they'll come across the Alaska Peninsula. It'll be uh, mostly cloudy, occasional snow showers there with uh, breezy north to northwest winds, nothing too terribly strong. And still a risk of some snow showers there, mainly Fogneck Island and uh, the Barrens back in toward Kachemak Bay. Uh, that's just a possibility. It should be a mostly dry day, cool temperatures there for Kodiak, south central Alaska. This moisture lifting northward now. So look for back into a clearing period, decreasing moisture, snow showers ending for Cook Inlet and eventually into the uh, Manuscans to Sitna Valley areas, but snow lingers throughout the day on Tuesday or on Wednesday there for the Copper River Basin, cutting off right along the North Gulf Coast. And then another trough weakening system moving northward brings a chance of snow over the northern Panhandle, clearing in the south uh, with no moisture at all. Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, uh, areas of low clouds, possible fog and flurries there with that uh, very weak low up over the, uh, just north of Kaktovik there. Light winds back to the west here. In fact, pretty light winds through much of the central interior. Look for some uh, gusty gap winds through the uh, eastern Alaska range. Also coming out of the Copper River Delta there, northern Lynn Canal Glacier Bay. Uh, be a pretty breezy as well. Moving on to uh, low temperatures forecast for tonight. Again, near 40 below in the, uh, a lot of the areas here, in fact, some areas drop, maybe drop back down to 40 to 45 below zero again. Milder here with cloud cover, 15 to 25 below there, north of the Alaska range to uh, right around zero here for the areas of the Copper River Basin. Could drop to five below Gulkana, but generally near zero or five to maybe 15 here for south central Alaska with increasing cloud cover to mid 20s for Kodiak. And it looks like uh, single numbers over the Bristol Bay area are actually a little below zero in some locations, warm into the uh, lower 20s for the peninsula and near 30 out over the Aleutians. Highs for tomorrow, uh, staying on the uh, cold side there, anywhere from uh, 15 to 25 below through much of interior Alaska, especially in the west and to the north there, uh, as well as uh, the coast. They are down along the southwest coast, temperatures a little above zero, Nunavak Island into the teens, mid 30s for the Pribilofs, mid to upper 30s for the Aleutians. And, uh, the southeast coast here, looking in the mid to upper 20s for the northern areas, 29 at Yakutat to near 40, say at Port Alexander, Mount Edgecombe, lower 30s over the southern panhandle, 
teens, mid to upper South Central Alaska, and maybe nudging above zero for the Copper River Basin. And then for the lows, coming up for Wednesday morning, uh, still quite cold here over the interior, anywhere from 25 to 45 below zero. Uh, less cloud cover now in the east, so uh, temperatures dropping back down toward, uh, well, 30 below or so around the Fairbanks area. Uh, still in the, mi uh, the minus 20s here in the east due to the uh, clouds and snow, but again, back to the west, clear skies and quite cold temperatures. Quite a, quite a contrast along the southwest coast, near to a little above zero, well below zero just inland, right around two degrees for Savunga, 29 for St. Paul, and lower 30s for the Aleutians. And it looks like uh, south of the Alaska Range dropping back below zero with again clearing taking place here in the Panhandle, mostly in the 20s to lower 30s. Highs in the afternoon down there, it looks like uh, anywhere from the uh, upper teens there near White Pass to the upper 30s along the coast, below zero through much of the interior, all the way out to the Arctic coast, and mild temperatures in the Aleutians. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Aviation uh, weather now, the uh, significant weather graphic here showing the marginal VFR, IFR, uh, big area IFR here over south central Alaska, right up to the uh, Alaska Range there to about uh, Windy Pass and eastward into the northeast copper, well, the northeast and central Copper River Basin. Marginal VFR back along the Gulf Coast there and into the Gulf of Alaska, more IFR, but off the coast here uh, with that next system and then some IFR over the northern Bering Sea. Pretty good VFR from Bristol Bay northward to the western Arctic coast and uh, areas of marginal VFR, or I should say areas of VFR here across the Aleutians, otherwise Bering mostly marginal. And then uh, VFR takes hold way out west there for Shimeon into uh, Amchitka Island with uh, areas of VFR all the way over to the Fox Islands. IFR here right up along the Yukon Delta coast over Nunavak Island back to St. Lawrence Island. Good VFR here in the interior slowly progressing eastward and we've got marginal VFR tomorrow afternoon oh, roughly covering the Susitna Valley and then eastward across the eastern Alaska range across the Kenai Peninsula and uh, VFR breaking out across much of the panhandle except way down there on the south side of uh, Prince of Wales Island with the uh, IFR staying off the coast. Areas of marginal VFR up over the eastern interior to the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. That uh, lingers up there on Wednesday and actually expands back to the west of the central coast. Marginal VFR eastern interior north of the Alaska range, some of that down into the Talkeetnas and uh, marginal over the southern panhandle. Again, IFR staying off the coast here, south of uh, Montague Island and VFR, Kodiak Island there, up in across just about all the western and central interior with uh, marginal VFR now just uh, coming up to the coastline late in the afternoon, extending up to St. Lawrence Island. And again, a lot of VFR out there over the western bearing. And for Wednesday afternoon, we've got IFR that reaches the coast here in the afternoon on Wednesday with the marginal not really penetrating too far inland beyond that. Uh, Bristol Bay basically VFR and then down the peninsula marginal up to the Pribilofs and then quite an area of VFR here from uh, right around Alaska all the way out towards Shimia and some IFR here along the north coast of the Panhandle otherwise uh, looking pretty good some remaining marginal conditions over the eastern interior. And for Anatovic, marginal VFR becoming VFR in the afternoon, but at again, farther east, uh, probably marginal throughout the entire day. And Lake Clark and Merrill, though, good VFR uh, from start to finish tomorrow. Rainy, same forecast. And uh, windy, though, starting out IFR becoming marginal. And for Isabel, same forecast. Lowest conditions, IFR in the morning becoming marginal in the afternoon. And Mentasta, marginal VFR with IFR lingering on the southern entrance. Otherwise, Tanita, IFR becoming marginal. And for Portage, IFR, be some improvement, possibly low IFR in the early morning or during the morning becoming just IFR in the afternoon. And then for Chilkoot and White, marginal becoming VFR. Freezing levels here at the surface, up uh, north of the Perloffs there, and then back down across to Alaska Island, pushing to the south, coming up into Prince William Sound, and then back down bisecting the coastline there, 2,000 feet around the Queen Charlotte's. Looking at the icy potential here uh, from the Alaska Peninsula, areas of light to very isolated, moderate, possibly mixed icing in this zone here. And also through this uh, kind of an expanding area here, could be uh, possibly should have thrown in maybe a little bit of uh, moderate or considerable moderate here in this zone coming down to south central Alaska. Panhandle, another batch trying to push northward there into the southern areas. 
jet stream northerly flow here continues out over the or through the Bering Strait right along the west coast, uh, 50 to 60 knots diving south with this trough in the Gulf of Alaska, cold upper low here over the northern interior and uh, otherwise a jet south of the panhandle there. Uh, just uh, this branch here just bringing that moisture up tomorrow afternoon into the southern areas. And at 9,000 feet, uh, good north to northwest flow here, again out of the uh, Chuck C. 25 to 30 knots here across the western interior, eastern uh, Bering Sea, up to 50 knots across the peninsula, much lighter for Kodiak, and lighter winds here with the trough axis over the interior. Uh, southerlies about 15 to 20 over the eastern interior, and easterlies picking up to 30 knots for the southern panhandle. 3,000 feet. 15 to 20 here from the Chukchi Sea to St. Lawrence Island, picking up to 25 to 35 as you come down across uh, the Alaska Peninsula there. Lighter with high pressure over the uh, southern Bering and the Aleutians. And 35 knot winds for the southern Panhandle will result in some moderate chop down there tomorrow afternoon. And also moderate chop uh, pretty likely over the Alaska Peninsula in across Bristol Bay and the southwest interior. Otherwise looking good out over the western Aleutians and the interior areas. There are some important things we can all do to avoid runway incursions. Things we probably all know, or have known but forgotten, or that we sometimes overlook because of distractions. Some of these things are simply plain old common sense. Always look, listen, and expect the unexpected. Minimize distractions by keeping a sterile cockpit while taxiing. Know where you are and where you're going. Never guess, always know. And if you don't know or are uncertain, always ask. And that brings me to a word or two about the best ally we pilots have at a Howard Airport, the air traffic controller. Runway 25 left at Delta position. Hold traffic on the Delta. These are the professionals dedicated to leading us safely through the often complex and confusing runways and taxiways and traffic of a Howard Airport. This is a six year pop turning base at the 605 freeway report turning final. The pace of air traffic communications can be confusing, even overwhelming. We should not feel hesitant to ask controllers to repeat an instruction, to ask for progressive taxi instructions if we need them. Narrow ground, Cherokee 32123, uh, request uh, progressive taxi instructions, please. November, Charlie, and Bravo. If you don't know, ask. If you aren't sure, verify. When communicating with air traffic control, always listen before you transmit. Cessna 3284 Delta, holding position, runway 19 right. Also, listen to what the controller is saying to other aircraft. It can have a critical bearing on your safety. Again, maintaining situational awareness at all times is key. Be sure you understand all air traffic control instructions. If you receive a clearance you don't understand or is contrary to your position on the airport, you should verify the clearance. Cessna 453 Sierra Papa. Runway 19er full length, clear for takeoff. Power Tower, Cessna 453 Sierra Papa. Is that Bravo 3? Uh, verify we're still clear for takeoff. Cessna 3 Sierra Papa. Negative, hold your position. 453 Sierra Papa. Holding short, runway 19 at Bravo 3. Runway incursions occur most frequently when pilots enter or cross a runway without authorization. Typically, communication between the pilot and air traffic control is good. Pilots hear and read back hold short instructions and know what they're supposed to do. Uh, Cessna 93018, hold short, runway 26 right. But they cross hold short lines or taxi on the runway without authorization anyway. Always read back all hold short instructions. Arrow 1504, hold short, runway 6 left. Arrow 1504, hold short, runway 6 left. A simple roger won't do. This applies to position and hold and clearances to enter a runway as well. Cessna 80138, position and hold, runway 25 left. Cessna 80138, position and hold, runway 25 left. We can avoid most runway incursions by reducing distraction in the cockpit while taxiing, familiarizing ourselves with our departure and our destination airports, and staying alert at all times. Be sure to write down taxi instructions, but never do it on the move. It can be a distraction. The same is true with checklists. 
Conduct them while stopped, never on the move. Pilots, controllers, and drivers all rely on their eyes as their primary sensors. And the simple fact is our eyes don't work as well at night as they do during the day. The visual acuity we lose at night, combined with inconsistent cockpit lighting, canopy reflections, and possible rain, snow, or fog, make taxi, takeoff, and landing operations that seem easy during the day a real challenge at night. Pilots should observe a few simple lighting standards that will help those around them maintain their situational awareness. When taxiing into position and hold, turn on all exterior lights except landing lights. This will make your aircraft more conspicuous to other aircraft on final. Don't turn on your landing lights until you have been given clearance to take off. If you see an aircraft with its landing lights turned on, it's a clear signal that that aircraft is moving or is about to move down the runway for takeoff. When instructed to cross a runway, turn on all lights, including landing lights. The exception would be if your lights would interfere with someone holding or approaching from the other side of the runway. Also, when you line up for departure at night, consider lining up about three feet to the left or right of center line so another pilot on final can more easily distinguish your aircraft from the runway lights. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back, looking at today's sea ice analysis. A uh, continued uh, southward movement here, especially south of St. Lawrence Island and uh, westward all along the southwest coast here, that westward progression with the exception of Bristol Bay and uh, with the northerly winds expected to diminish here, that southward uh, push will tend to slow down, while, but the westward extent with the cold temperatures will continue for the next several days. Moving on to the uh, coastal forecast here, good gale force winds of that next system coming up toward the panhandle in the afternoon, so east winds increasing 30 to 40 knots here, strongest along the south coast, these building to 14 feet tomorrow afternoon. Clarence Strait, winds on the increase, southeast 25. Northerly 25 for Stevens Passage, gusts 40 knots, north 30 for Lynn Canal, and small craft advisories for the north coast. On Wednesday, easterly 20, the 25 knots here, central north coast, and southeast 25, 11 foot seas down south. Clarence Strait, uh, still small craft advisories there, southeast 25, north 25, Stevens Passage, gale force northerly for Lynn Canal. Bristol Bay, north at 20 tomorrow, east 20 for the eastern north Gulf coast, dropping back to uh, 15 knots there for the western coast. Uh, and for the, or the western zone, good gales, Kachemak Bay up to 45 knots, uh, about 40 knots across the Barrens, lighter 10 to 15 knot winds for Cook Inlet. And for Wednesday, that continues north uh, to northeast, 10 to 15 for Cook Inlet, minimum gales now Kachemak Bay and the Barrens with uh, 10 to 12 foot seas, north 20 knots, 7 foot seas for the western north Gulf Coast and the eastern Gulf Coast there, north at 15, Prince William Sound, northwest 20, a few higher gusts. Out of the bays there, sees it about four feet. Kodiak Island tomorrow, northwest 35, Shilakoff Strait, otherwise north 30 on the east side of the island. And then from Sitkanak to Cape Sarachev, good gale force winds there. Uh, four, 35 to 40 knots, gusts 50 to 55 knots. And then the uh, Bering Sea side lighter, northwest 25 and north 24, Bristol Bay. Those come down to about 15 on Wednesday there for the bay. Northwest 25 here for the Alaska Peninsula at eight foot seas. And then from Castle Cape to Sitkanak, northwest 40. Minimum gales occurring out of the northwest here along the east side of Kodiak and Shilakoff Strait, edging down to 30 knots with seven foot seas. For the eastern Aleutians, on Alaska Island, we'll see the strongest winds there. Northwest 20 to 25, seas up to nine feet, but uh, 15 knots turned southerly, just 10 to 15 for the central Aleutians, Adak and Athka laying down pretty good or continuing that way. Then back up to about south at 20, and then northeast 15 back out to the west. And the outlook for the next day, a uh, little bit better gradient here will kick the winds up way out west up to 30 knots, otherwise southeast 15. Just 10 knot winds in the forecast with three to four foot seas for the central Aleutians. And then it looks like uh, west to northwest, 15 to 25 knot winds here for the Fox Islands with seas running five to eight feet. And the southwest coast, uh, kind of variable, north of Nunavak Island, they're either east of 15, north 15, south of the island, west 20 for the Perbloff, southwest 20 for St. Matthew Island. East 20 for St. Lawrence Island, and then for the Wednesday, 
North 15, northeast 15 to 20 along the southwest coast. Small craft advisories here, St. Matthew Island down across the Purple Offs with seas 78 feet. And for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast tomorrow, we've got uh, winds on the increase again on the extreme east side there, up to 20 knots. Uh, that'll result in wind chills falling to about 55 degrees below zero there and otherwise lighter winds out of the north here. Barely a breeze at 10 knots, northeast 10, and then northerlies again, 10 knots, Cape Beaufort down to the Bering Strait. Those will come up to about 15 from the Bering Strait up to uh, Cape Thompson, otherwise north 10 knots, western central coast, and light westerly drift here on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast at about 10 knots or less. And for tonight again, we're watching a developing area of uh, snow, southeast flow advecting moisture into a trough axis line right through here while the cold Arctic air remains locked in place over the western central interior. So snow chances increase. Uh, could see a couple inches snowing by morning, or a couple inches falling by morning here for south central Alaska and uh, snow periods of all the way up to the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Clear and cold, temperatures uh, 25 to 45 below again. And then uh, this area of moisture mostly staying off the coast, but by tomorrow afternoon it'll begin to make some progress uh, at least to the coastline with uh, more westerly flow out over the Bering Sea as this high retreats down to the south or breaks off to the north. Clear and cold over the western interior. Periods of snow again, another couple inches falling tomorrow. Uh, here over south central Alaska, more showery for Kodiak, and that extends right up across to the Tanana Valley to the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, drying out over the northern panhandle of the system edging northward. More offshore flow there that'll uh, possibly even clear the skies out a little bit, but then that thing will move northwest and weaken considerably, but that'll be a chance of snowing over the northern panhandle. This area shifts northward on uh, Wednesday afternoon, so look for some clearing for Cook Inlet. Colder temperatures coming back in on uh, Wednesday night, clearing cold. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>